Hello, welcome. Welcome. This is the Focus on the Word Bible Study. It, I'm Gail Williamson joining you today on Thursday, October 27th in the year 2023. 22. Um, I want to welcome you. It's been a few weeks since I've been online, been very busy with a number of things. And I want to share a little bit about that. Uh, but before I get started, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this time together. I thank you for those that join, be it now or at a future date. I thank you for the technologies that govern this time together. And I ask your blessing to be upon it in the name of Jesus. Lord, um, prepare our hearts and our minds to hear from you. And I am uh, ask and I remind you of your word that it will not return empty, but it will do what you send it out to do. Now lead me and guide me. You are the teacher and I rely on you. So what you want me to say is what I'll say and what you want me to do is what I'll do. Forever, all the praise, the honor, and the glory belong to you in the wonderful and matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So uh, a lot has been going on. I've been busy with a lot of things um, on my job which has uh, caused me to delay uh, and have to cancel. And um, and I've had some other changes and things that I'm doing. Um, so, I, and what I wanted to share with you is I've been uh, having this sense of feeling lost, uh, kind of like someone who knows where they should be going. But, you know, the path looks familiar but you don't feel like you're on the right track. Am I lost? Uh, it, it, it almost feels like being in the water, but I'm just kind of like, what's going on? And uh, and the Lord said, you're not doing what I called you to do. And that is, I know I'm called to teach. So when I do what he's called me to do, I'm satisfied. Because when you do what God is calling you to do, the sense of satisfaction because you are fulfilling his plan, his purpose, his call in your life. So that's what I've been going. And I'm like, what is going on? You know, and it's a, it's a feeling like, where do I fit in? Where, where should I be? And, uh, so I made it my goal that no matter what, I was going to be online tonight because I knew I wasn't doing. And when God reveals it to you, you better do what he reveals. Then you're in disobedience, right? So it's the last Thursday in October. And the last time I was with you was the first Thursday in October. And uh, at that time, I shared with you, um, you know, October Breast Cancer Awareness. Um, our church has also uh, focus on lupus, but it's also domestic violence awareness. So when I met last, the first Thursday in October, I told a little bit about my background. And I want to kind of finish out October with reminding you about domestic violence awareness. But, uh, you know, one of the things is when whom the sun sets free, is free indeed. And when you are delivered and set free, you're not, you know, I'm no longer a victim. I'm no longer a, con I am more than victorious. I am an overcomer through Christ Jesus who set me free. So the Gail who was the Gail who was abused was, you know, uh, you know, just low self-esteem, always putting herself down. And, you know, there's a quote that you hear people say a lot. In fact, I thought it was from the Bible and it was to thine own self be true. And for years, I, I thought it was in the Bible, but it's actually Shakespeare in his play Hamlet. And, um, and I was reading something this evening that said, Shakespeare used over 2,000 references or Bible things in his writings. So no wonder we kind of thought it maybe belonged to the Bible. But 
the quote is to thine own self be true. And with that, you have to have a realization of who you are. See, God wants to show you. He wants to reveal the areas that he wants to heal in you. And as long as you act like an ostrich and stick your head in the ground and go, la, 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 la. <laughs> you know, that's what we, that's what kids do when they don't want to hear it. No, 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 I'm not listening. I'm li listening. But the psalmist says in Psalm 139, search me, try me, know me. And uh, I thought I was going to go somewhere else. But as I started talking to you, uh, you know, the Lord said not so. So I want to go over to Psalm 139 right now because you need to be true. God wants to reveal what he wants to heal. And let me just say, if you go to the doctor and you've got something going on, uh, one second, 139. If you go to the doctor and maybe you have some kind of symptom and you, you think, I, I think I need to see a doctor. So you go to the doctor, you describe your symptom. And sometimes they have to do procedures. So uh, sometimes they may want to do tests. Or sometimes they may do a procedure. Sometimes they may even need to operate to remove or fix something. If you go to a dentist, no matter what procedure you get done, before they do it, they, they, you know, you go to the hospital, it's in and out. Sometimes you know you're going to stay. Even to have a baby, they bring those papers to you and you got to, and you got to sign a bunch of stuff, don't they? And they say, okay, this one is for this. This one is for that. This one. And you know what? Before they can do anything on you, they ask your permission to work. Think about it. You go to the dentist. If you want to get a root canal, they describe it. They tell you what it could be, what could go wrong. But now I need you to sign off that you, 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 you're giving me permission to do this. Why do you think God is any different? He wants your permission to do the procedure. There are things that need to be healed. And you know what? He heals us in increments. He, he fixes certain things. He lets some things go. Because you're not strong enough for the next level of his procedure. But then as you grow and you mature, then it's like, okay, I want to show you what I want to heal. He always reveals what he wants to to heal. Can you say that? God reveals what he wants to heal. He's going to reveal to you so that he wants you to be true. He, he, and remember whom he sets free is free indeed. Now you can walk around and act like you still a prisoner, <laughs> but God wants to reveal the areas that need to be healed. And as you grow and as you mature, and if you can look back and say, I'm not the same person I was last year. I'm not the same person I was two years from ago. Then it's time to move up in your growth level. The A baby, we expect babies to do different things, don't, don't we? You don't expect a grown person to be at a certain level. There's a revelation coming because it's time to grow. God reveals what he wants to heal. Thank you, Dr. Clark. All those years ago, she told me that. And I've heard many people say it. God reveals what he wants to heal. But wait, there's more. He's not going to just reveal to you. He's going to, well, let me put it this way. He's going to show you what he wants to heal in you. But you know what? Sometimes you, he will show you, you will see things in others. And what he shows to you, 
He wants to heal it in someone else, but he's looking for someone to pray. You can't fix anybody. You can't go and change anybody's behavior. Laws and rules are in place to make us stay in a, stay in a boundary. But deep in the heart, what's hidden in the heart, a person is going to do. Out of the mouth, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. Life and death come from the mouth and come from the issues in the heart. And what you think about, what you spend time on, what captures your attention, what you choose to look at, will go down and drip and become a treasure in your house. See, I'm all over the place because I'm trying to fulfill my purpose. God said, you just do what I tell you to do and I'm going to do the rest. So I asked uh, Psalm 139. It's a psalm that delivered me and set me free. And deliverance and freedom comes in increments. He frees which you can, which your little fragile frame can can uh, bear. And he'll patch up and then he brings you to the next level. And it's like, okay, next level. And even now he's dealing, I'm no longer that abused woman. I am victorious. I'm an overcomer, right? Um, and the devil is under my feet. But if I don't stay on it, Gail will slide right back. And become that victim again. So Psalm 139. I'm reading the King James. Uh, David wrote the psalm. O Lord thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down sitting and my uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. As you grow and as you mature. You realize... <laughs> I'm, what am I hiding? Who am I hiding from? God understands your thought. God joins you. He knows what's going on. Let's see. Uh, my thought afar off. Thou comp uh, compassive, compassive, my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. He already knows your ways. He already knows my ways. He understands my path, my laying down, my getting up. He knows everything. Verse 4, for there is not a word on my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thy hand upon me. Um, you know, I, I always say this, you're hedged, you're beset. He has you wedged in, in the front and in the back. And he puts his hand on you and he's trying to guide you in the direction that you should go. My God, my God. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. It's you can't comprehend this with your natural mind. See, this is what David is trying to explain. He's like, when I think about it, you, God, you just blew my mind. That That's what he's saying. But he didn't know how to say it. He said, it's too high. I can't even attain it. I can't comprehend. I don't know how to phantom it. I don't know how to put it in words. You know, when you feel the love of God and you start understanding his love towards you and why you didn't die when you should have died because his love, his hand, he had had you in front and behind. He had his hand on you. He was directing you even when you were trying to be stubborn and didn't want to be turned. He was yet there all the time. And when you catch a glimpse of that and you start understanding you're blowing my mind. I don't even know. And when you cry out your thanks, there's no words to thank him because my language is not worthy of the goodness of God. I hope someone can understand that. He has been so good to me. If he never blesses me another day in my life, if he never does another thing, 
what he has already done, what my eye has already seen, what my ear has already beheld, the doors he has opened, what he has saved me from, even from myself, what he has already done. Oh my God, he doesn't have to do another thing. But you know what? I ain't holding his hand. Go ahead and bless me, Lord. Bless me, Lord, because I know he will. But it's no words to describe this love that when you start catching a glimpse, what word can you put on that love? His thoughts. He already thought about you before you were born. Let me keep going. He said uh, in verse uh, verse 10, even, uh, wait a minute. Uh, verse 7, where, where shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from their present, from thy pleasant presence? Where can you go from the spirit of God? Genesis 1 and 1 says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And it says, darkness covered the face of the, and the spirit of the Lord hovered over the earth. Where can you go from his spirit? I got to go over there to Genesis 1. We're coming back to Psalm 39, 139, sorry. Genesis 1 says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the, the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. That's the New Living Translation. So even in the beginning where there was nothing but darkness uh, covering everything, the Spirit of God was there. Psalm 139, whither can I go from that, thy Spirit? Where can I go from your presence, O God? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, Thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. The right hand indicates justice. It indicates power. The right hand is a symbol for the power and the justice that God, and he grabs you. Even then, with thy right hand, with your power, with your justice, you hold me. Verse 11. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. Because where you have light, there is no darkness, my friend. Good evening. Good evening. Where you have light. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It is a shadow because uh, light is present even in your valley. It is a shadow because you can only have a shadow where light is present. Come on now, you need to catch it. You need to see what God is throwing out to you. To yourself be true. For I have been here always, he says. I was there in the beginning and I will be forevermore. If my spirit hovered over the darkness, surely I'm hovering and brooding over you. Just like a mother hovers over her children, like the eagle protects her nest. I hear the Lord say, I'm hovering over you. I protect you, my child. I'm moving on you. I have, per I have been with you all these times, even when you went into your selfish state, even when you thought you could do it yourself. I have been with you. 
and I never change. He is not a man that he should lie. So he never changed. He is always ever present, always there. Where can I go? <laughs> Where can I go? Verse 13, for thou possessest my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well. I got a feeling I'm going to stop there because I just feel the unction of the Lord that we, this is a scripture that we hear a lot. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. We teach it to the children. We we have our children. Uh, but do you know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made? Do you know that? Do you accept that? And if you don't accept it, you're calling God a liar. Huh? Do you think he's a liar? And why do you think this word is true for everyone except you? You're not exempt. You're not exempt. I'm not exempt. And this is the challenge we have. See, the challenge is what God reveals, he wants to heal. And he may reveal something about someone else that also applies to you. But he wants your permission to operate. He wants your permission to operate. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are created in the image of God. We've been created the way he chose us to be created. He knew us in our mother's womb. Uh, I'm going to drop down and we're going to come back up. I feel like we're going to continue with Psalm 139 next week. But I want to drop down to, to verses 23 and 24. That says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Search, know, try. Search me, O God, know my heart, know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. To search is to examine, to look, to shine the spotlight, to reveal. Did you hear that? To reveal. To search is to reveal. Now, who's the one that's ignorant? Is it us or is it God? We've already read he hovered over the deep. He knew every, he knew your ways. He knew you're getting up and you're getting down. He knew he has your reins, just like the rider has the reins of the horse. He's got it. So who needs to see what needs to be done? It is us, my friend. Search and know. Then he says try. To try means to prove. It means to test it. To test. I've told you before, proving grounds are there to see if what I think is going to happen is going to happen. All of the car, the major car manufacturers have approving grounds where they take their new product and take it out on the range and try it. They so that when they put that sticker on the car that says how many miles per gallon, how long will these tires last? How how long were the windshield wipers? How long is this oil change good for? How do they know that? They have tried it. They have proved it. They have put it to the test. They have examined it. And then they test it. And then they examine. Then they shine a the light on it. So that when I say, Lord, I know you know all things. Isn't that what the disciples, you know all things, Lord. We follow you. See, if you stay in this long enough and you stay with the Lord, you know he knows all things. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I go from you? He's, then he says in verse 24, and see if there be any wicked way in me. Who is doing the seeing? God already sees. We already read that in Psalm 139. That's for you and that's for me. And you know what? We can never be so big that we get too big to be uh, examined. 
it's a season the fall season i love fall it's something very special about fall i'm going to come back to psalm 139 next week i don't know what it is about fall or autumn but i love it a uh, uh, one thing is not real hot and it's not real cold we could also wear a jacket. You know, I like putting a jacket on. I like wearing a sweater, you know. I like a little longer sleeve. And, you know, the heat is all right. I'm not a big, hot person, but I like a little nip in the air. But the trees start changing their colors, right? Isn't it beautiful to look around and see the majesty that God has created? And in the trees... Um, you can drive past a wooded area and you see every color there is. And how do, how is it that all the yellow trees are not together and all the orange trees are not together and then all the purple tree leaves are not together? But do you see the, the mixture, the diversity that God has in his creation? My friend, we got to watch our attitude. And we can't get caught, caught up on color because God, everything in, is mixed in God's creation and everything is together. And in heaven, we're going to have brothers and sisters of every color, every every look, every, every skin tone. We're going to be together. But in fall, you see the leaves start changing. You know, after a while, you know, they get, uh, they'll fall off. But until they fall off, there's a promise that I'm coming back. See, he says seed time and harvest time. The seasons, he put that in place in Genesis chapter 1. He called the seasons and what will happen in the seasons. So I want to tell you whatever's going on in your life, if things are looking kind of wonky and you got all these colors coming at you, just know there's a promise. I'll be back. And the old things will pass away. Behold, there's a season coming where all things will be made new. Yes, stop holding on to the old. Have you seen a tree trying to hold on to all of its little leaves all dried up? But it, the, the, the tree lets go of that which is no longer needed. And then we walk along and we appreciate. You know, it's something about walking on leaves and they're crunching and seeing the colors. And But it's a promise. The tree is still alive. And there's a promise. I'm coming back in spring. I'll be back. And I'm going to show you more things that you've not seen. My dear friend, greater things are coming. My dear friend, whatever's going on in your life, the shadow is there, but the light is there. The, the shadow always tries to make itself bigger. Have you noticed that with a shadow? It depends on how close it is to the light. The shadow can look real small or it can look real big. Walk close to the light so that the shadow gets real small. The devil operates in shadows. He wants you to look at what it looks like. Look at this. It's scary. It's creepy. With October 20, 31st coming, uh, you know, there's all these creepy things uh, that people celebrate. But, you know, no matter what the shadows, what they look like, the light is there. Whatever you are holding on to, let it go so God can heal because there's a promise of something better coming. Are you listening? Let it go so that you can receive the promise of something better. You can't get the new when you're holding on to the old. God wants to heal. What he wants to reveal to you the areas that need healing. And then he's like, do I have your permission? Psalm 139, 23 and 24. 24 is where you sign. Yeah. Look at verse 24. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. 
if this, if you make this your prayer, you're signing off the permission slip. You're giving him the permission that what I show you, I will heal it. I will bring you through it. And there's a promise of better to come. Oh, my dear friend, I thank you for being with me. Pray. Father, in the name, name of Jesus, I thank you for this time together. I thank you for leading us and guiding us. Lord, show us, reveal to us what you want to heal. Lord, uh, give us the courage to be like David, to say, search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me. But Lord, lead me in the way, in thy way everlasting. Lord, I give you permission. I trust you that you're not going to hurt me because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm letting go of the old because there's a promise. Everything is still in place. It's just old. It's just this has worn at the leaves. Some things you're holding on and some people you're holding on to have outlived their purpose with you. But yet you want them to stay attached. Let it go. Let it go. I don't have the rights to that song. Let it go. Uh-huh. And God has a promise because I'm still standing. I'm still here. The spirit of the Lord is still hovering and he's doing his work. Hallelujah. 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 And guess what? I'm doing my purpose. Oh, I'm so satisfied being with you this night. Thank you. Thank you. My dear friend, I plan on being back next week. Until we meet again, I love you. All right? Good night. Bye-bye.